Boo, 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 boo. What's up? Ni hao. Welcome to making Songbringer. Today I'm working on fixing some bugs and I'm gonna jump right in and doing it real fast. Super fast. Fast as I can. See how fast I am? <laughs> All right, I got a 15 minute timer. One thing I've noticed about setting a 15 minute timer is it helps me to be as effective as possible in writing code, fixing bugs, and even doing art and all those kind of things because a lot of times you can waste time um, fixing bugs, writing code, and all those kinds of things because you take steps that are labor extra laborious. There's just things you don't really need to do if you can do them in a different order. For example, compilation takes forever sometimes. So if you can figure out how to compile your code less and still get what you do done and be effective at it, then you're going to be saving yourself a lot of time. So I find that setting a 15 minute timer is helping me to create and innovate new ways to write code faster, fix bugs faster and all that. <laughs> that said, what I'm, what I'm probably about to do will probably just break all that. Um, let's do this first one here. Path into the boss switch room, pineal 3. Gained by water, but don't have a teleporter yet. All right. Um, we need a world pineal. This is uh, dungeon three. It's the before boss room. I'll run it real quick. That'll give me a debug out. Okay, I'm on branch console, I think. Right, okay. I'm in the right place to be doing bugs. That's another thing. I've got um, a bunch of different code bases to manage now because there's the console version, and the console version is going to have like a 1.0 release. So some bugs are being you know pushed into that branch. Some some things are being pushed into my more development style branch, like the Steam branch, that gets all the more like you know the more Devi type things. Um, the, the consoles will eventually get all those things too. It's just that they're going to take an extra moment because because of how difficult it is to put your game on consoles. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. So, um, yeah. Okay. So now I can look at the log and find... Where's the boss switch? Mob 10, it's 103. And I guess that would be 113 is the room right next to it. Mm, I want to not have switch 2. Oh, I don't. Those are the other switches. Okay. So I just want to confirm that there's some water here on the ground. This gate tile shouldn't appear in this dungeon. Oh, that's weird. Like, it doesn't have hit points? That's weird. Somehow the hit points got just removed. The heck happened there? And the point didn't work. Oh, uh, this is supposed to be two one three. Two oh three. Right, here we are. This dungeon has the gate item ice, which is all fine, but you don't have the teleporter yet in this dungeon, so you can't use ice. So how to solve that? How to solve it in the fastest way possible, but also the most long-term way. So, you know, if I, I can't solve bugs quickly and not effectively. So most important thing is effectiveness, but I think we can do this both things in one here. Um, the dungeon item, ice, yeah, it gets pushed back. Park. 
Hark always has ice and water. Ah, uh, okay. So the goal items. Yeah, all right. So the, this dungeon does have the teleport. Yep, 073 has the item teleport. So the game was kind of trying to do its its job there. Of, you know, it, it, you get the teleporter at the end of this dungeon, but it doesn't help you when you have to go through the boss switch room, which requires crossing that ice or that water. I think the simplest way to handle this is to lower the requirement of the gate if the goal item is teleport. So if the goal item is teleport, the gate item or the gate block is water, then that water should go backwards in the gate items to fire or whatever growbacks, anything, anything less than ice. I think the function would be add gates. So, oh, going back to the whole concept of, um, of doing things effectively, but in the least amount of time, um, I've found that I like to try and get everything that I wanna do for that 15 minute task coded before I ever run it. That's just a challenge. I probably, it's probably not going to happen every time, but the, that's something to stretch for, right? If I can actually code everything and only compile once, that would be amazing. And it's happened a couple times where I'm like, whoa, that just how, that just all happened. So anyways, let's see if we can do that. See, like it, you get the gate tile Is this world? No. Here it is. Not tiles. Except there's one problem here, and that the not tiles, the way they work is it goes upwards. So it starts at the first gate and works upwards towards the max, and if it, if, it, if the gate tile contains an, a not tile, then it keeps going. We want to do the other way around. And this is kind of a special case, so... We need to work backwards for some from for some gate goal item combos. If the world if the world's goal item do we have how do we get the goal? Goal item. I know I do this in story system. No dot goal item world get dungeon get level Z get goal item. We have the dungeon. Mm -mm. Okay, let's get the dungeon. We have the level Z. Yeah, there's the level Z.
Okay, so if the goal item is teleport and the gate item, the gate tile is water, we need to work backwards. We should still have n, so let's just work backwards through this. I equals, I think, N, N plus I. All right, I need to, uh, Hmm. I guess this n minus i is greater than or equal to Sad Dogs, what's up man? Yeah man, working on stuff today. More stuff. How you been, man? I've been great. I've been really um, going through kind of like a tough time. It's been a really tough part of the project, getting all of the code ready for PlayStation, Xbox, bugs fixed, getting everything all settled because um, it's, it's terrifying because, um, the way, the way, uh, if like, if I don't get everything right with the gameplay and I, I I'm, I'm terrified of changing any gameplay after the game gets released. Right. So like, for example, um, I don't want to change anything that would affect a speed runner after the game is released. I don't want to change any any of the gameplay at all. I want all the gameplay to be just settled, solid, concrete, robust. Everything is good. But it's terrifying because I have to have all of that in place right now. You know, actually a week ago, I had to have all that done. So because it's all got to be ready for the PlayStation and the Xbox builds. So there were a couple of things where I, would, I noticed I was like, oh my God, the whole game lost this one room that was so cool. Luckily, I fixed all these things. I'm pretty happy with how the gameplay turned out. So pretty much at this point, none of the gameplay for Songbringer can be changed. So that was a super terrifying thing to go through and lots of code merging and lots of sleepless nights. But I'm all I'm through it all. So, yeah, it was it was. But now now things are looking now I'm over the hump, you know, definitely over the hump and things are a, a bit smoother, easier. I can get back to doing streams more regularly and stuff like that. Um, at this point, it's mostly bug fixes. Not as not as many features are going to go into Songbringer at this point. Um, there will be a few more like little cutscenes and things like that and art, things like that. So, but those are not going to really affect gameplay. How about yourself, man? How have you been? All right, so there, going along with this principle of trying to code everything before I run it, looks like this is good. If this works, then I won't have to compile again. You been busy with school? You get into the, oh, finally you're getting in the nitty gritty, huh? Cool, man. You're getting past the, uh, those intro courses and stuff. What are you working on right now? Okay, let's see if this works. We got a breakpoint. We got the code written, so hopefully it you know what? Actually we need to test that. And we need to be this definitely needs to be at the world point that we're talking about. So if 
Area pause is what was it? One oh three. Something. I think it was one oh three. Ooh, 15 minutes are up. I did not finish my bug. But let's set a timer for another 15 minutes. Anyway. Java course. Still feels kind of like intro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You seem like a pretty, pretty advanced coder to me, man. I'm sure a lot of this intro stuff is going to be kind of, kind of like that for you. Oh, 103? No, it's 203. 203. All right, now we're ready to do it. Yeah, there you go. At least it's an easy A. Oh, cool, a theory course, that sounds interesting. Computing, how they work in general. Sweet. How small are our transistors these days? There's something like 20 micro, 20 nano? I don't know what, I don't know what the difference between a micron and a nanometer is actually. Digital and Boolean logic, Carnot maps, those are, I know what those were are. Goal item. All right, we're at area pods 203. They are, right? They're crazy small. Okay, so the goal item is teleport. Good. And the tile is water. Awesome. If the goal item is teleport and the tile is water, then we need to do something about it. All right, for i equals one, n minus, what's n? n is four, that's the fourth item, great. So we wanna try for the third item first. i is one, n minus i is greater than or equal to one, uh, plus plus tile, this looks okay. All right, we're gonna go. Oh, why is this even a for loop? That's just gonna keep looping over and over. Yeah, so great. We wanna break immediately, basically. Right, tables, you can use to simplify Boolean equations. Yeah, that's it, circuits. Right, right. That's one thing I didn't really learn. I went to college for about a year and a half, university for a year and a half. I didn't really, I didn't graduate. But I did have a good time learning there. It was great. And that's one thing I kind of wish I would have learned more about is hardware. I was only studying software. So if n is greater than or equal to 2, we can go ahead and grab the tile, just n minus one. Clamp that between one and max. Let's check that again. I think this should solve the problem right here. I shouldn't have to compile anymore after this. Right, just, yeah, read a book, totally. That's what's nice about engineering is that you deal with concepts that are like truths and like kind of like absolutes and mathematics and things like that, or at least in, in theory, you can kind of understand. I like that because you can understand it when it comes to things like art and English and things like that. It's, it's also fun and fascinating, but it's not as black and white as, as engineering is. Oh, there's no lectures. Whoa, interesting. Okay, we're gonna move backwards one tile 
to get the fire pillar. This is dungeon number three. So we should, in this world, we should have the fire pillar or the fire, the lighter by now. So this is okay to throw this gate item here. Pretty sure this is done. Let's take that out of the equation, stop this. And then we'll run from my um, command line. Vim to test this one last time. Now this time I'm just gonna let it run and we'll see in the game for sure if it moved that back to a fire pillar. Oh, cool, man. Well, thanks for stopping by and saying hi. I appreciate it. I'll catch you later too, man. Good, we got fire pillars right here. If I use my lighter that I would have gotten by now, I can get through this. Even though I've got ice and the gold items teleport, I can get through its gate. Solve this. You know, run through the dungeon. Thank you. Appreciate it, Salad. And let's just run to the. the boss. Oh, I remember this dungeon. Wade through this dungeon. Uh, this last... This last time I did my playthrough. Okay, and if I would have fought this bot, let's just save there. I don't really need to... I don't need to check that a million times. Okay, good. I'm archiving this bug. Let's, uh... Copy that description. Archive this. Check this in. Okay, and here I'm. This is kind of like a thing I'm learning today. This is really important to manage these several code bases. Now I have three branches. I have the console branch, which is the branch the PS4 and Xbox is going to be. Dev is the one where I'm going to be checking in all my new stuff. Master is going to be the thing whenever I release something to Steam. It'll be go. It'll go to master and get its own thing. I'm using something called GitFlow. This is really, really awesome. If you, if you're in a kind of situation like me where you need to have, you need to have a good Git branching model. I didn't even know what a Git branching model was until last night. But this is freaking important. You got to have a good model for how your branches work because I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to use cherry picks. I'm going to go when I've got when I've got something I want to put on my my console branch, I'll just cherry pick a commit from the develop branch. And that's a bad idea because there's better ways to do it without having to do cherry picks at all. Just using git merging if you use something like this, git flow. So, this is important if you're you probably already know this if you're managing multiple code bases, so I'm probably just wasting air. Anyways, I'm on good. I'm on a console branch. I just did that. Let's check what I changed. All right, work backwards for some gay goal item combos. Just looking that over. I don't see anything I might have missed. All right, let's commit that. Okay. It's going into console. Let's make this a little shorter. Boss switch room, final three. Gated by water, but don't have teleporter. All right, commit that. Push it on branch console still. Now we gotta bring this into the dev branch. Actually, I don't really need to do that just yet. I can save all those for later when I just wanna do one git merge. Yeah, let's not do this. This is this would just suck up time. So we're gonna stay on the console branch while we're fixing these, these bugs. And just merge it later. Okay, next bug. Good, that was, that was only like 25 minutes to get that one bug done. Not bad for talking the whole time as well. All right, 15 more minutes, let's do it. 
This one, God, this could take a while. I don't know. Shadow's staying on the screen forever. But luckily it happens consistently in this one place. Hopefully. Let's see if it does. If not, I might have to do this one later. Okay. Um, we're still at Pineal. We're at Rock Face. Oh, good. If we're already at Pineal, then we can just look up where Rock Face is. Rock Face 1. 2 zero, zero? No, it's, it's four, 10 4. Yeah, I think it was about 10 4. 10 4, good buddy. Pineal. Simple. I think I modified all of that. Oh, did I just get checked out? Ah, I got checked out, Dev. Yeah, that was a that was a time wasting mistake. Good. Okay, so I gotta remember, like, when when I'm doing all this stuff, I need to really be conscientious of where what what branch I'm on, but also not switching branches too much, if possible. Cause it just eats up time compiling right here. What's going on here? There's this, this bug happens where the shadows stay on the screen forever, but they're also either north or south. Yeah, this is totally the room. Here it is. Um, and I want to just, I guess I want to start here. Shadows are still okay. And now, oh, damn it. Oh, man, I don't know. Let's start here. Let's disable Vel. She can be kind of annoying with her dialogue sometimes. Put you back on. Ah, oh, okay. It didn't give me that bug there that first time, but hopefully if I walk on onto the screen, or maybe it had something to do with meditating. Yeah, still we got no shadows. Oh. Okay, the shadows are not messing up. What about if I meditate? This is the this is one of the trickiest things to do in programming is debugging an issue that doesn't happen every time. See, it might have been something else. Like it might have, it might have been in some other area and triggered this somehow. But what happens if I meditate? give this some, I know it had, it, it might have had something to do with like, either the time of day, or maybe going downstairs or into a dungeon or something. Man, the computer is like, going crazy all your night. I bet you game shows just... Okay, I'm failing to find anything I can do about this yet. Well, 
Ah, okay, I'm gonna go. I want to fall back to another technique for finding bugs that you just can't reproduce, and that's to look at the code and see if I can understand any way that that situation might happen. So what I was noticing was that um, the shadows were always from the north. As if, as if the world had the light north thing. Is it called light north? Yeah, light north. Too. Oh, that would kind of explain it. If I went into a. Oh. Oh, okay, that gives me an idea. If I go into a swordless dungeon, which is, I think, dungeon two, yeah, yeah, let's try this. Let's go into dungeon two and get out of the dungeon, and maybe it's light north flag just got stuck on. See, here in the, in the swordless dungeons, the shadows are always from the north. And whatever angles else, if there's any other, like this flame right here adds another little tiny shadow. But mostly the shadows are from the north, so you get these big, long shadows coming always in the Swordless Dungeon, which looks really cool. But if there's a bug, maybe that's getting stuck there. And if I walk back to the overworld, it's just the problem is that that's. Yeah. Check it out. It's full daylight, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is daylight. Yeah, oh, that's it. Oh, it's not too hard to solve. <laughs> oh my gosh, the shadows are backwards, too. Oh, but the, wait, those pillars are backwards, but rock shadow's not backwards. That's confusing. Anyways, this shouldn't be too hard to solve. What's happening is probably just go to render system. Render system has this function that um, it sets its attributes. Right, it sets its levels for a current. That's it. It's levels. Set levels. Outdoor dot set. Indoor dot set. Default shader. Outdoor. <gasps> That's it! The defaults doesn't have a light north! Oh! This is super easy to fix, man. Okay, there's this, uh, yeah. Light north. Is there anything else that these these dungeons have that the defaults don't? We got levels, levels min, levels max, color burn, soft light, dark offset, light scale. Light strength, night amount, night duration, sunset window, sunset time, shadows. There it is, light north. Light north needs to be a default of zero. Yes. Oh, this is so great. I'm glad I found this bug. And with the using the, this is such a good technique. Just thinking about the code, what could have gone wrong to cause that bug? Really, really, it's a good one. I think light north zero, is that what it's supposed to be? Set levels, outdoor, set, oh, this is the top one we're looking at. Levels, class here, set. Set light north, data get child, light north, set i. Set i takes, if it's not null, var equals. All right, if it's not null, yeah, equals get int. I guess light north would be zero, what the heck? Let's check it out. Light north equals two. It does this equals one. It does. What was that? Light north equals one. I don't know. 
Yeah, light north zero is the default. Great. Okay, going back to, we might actually fix this bug in the 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Wow. Here we go. All right, we're running it again. Only thing we changed was data. Love fixes like that. Didn't even have to recompile. Okay, let's go out of this. We got shadows appearing from the north here in this dungeon. We're gonna go out of the dungeon. So got shadows north. Yes! Got shadows back to where they're supposed to be. There's still some kind of weird little glitch where it, it, it kind of messes with your shadows a bit. Oh, I'm glad that bug is fixed. That's awesome. And fixed in such an easy manner. See, this is the thing, man. When, when you're in a good state of mind, it makes fixing difficult things like this swift. But if you're in a bad state of mind, or if you're having a bad day, or you're thinking negatively, or at least in my own personal experience, if I'm thinking negatively, or I'm having a bad day, that would have been four times as hard. At least. I would have been like, how am I going to find this? Blah, 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 blah. And I just, it, I probably would have gone around in circles. But anyways, so it's good to keep a good state of mind if you can. It helps you code faster. Light north. <laughs> I don't even really need to review this change that much. Great. We're on console branch, right? Yep. Mindful of that. Great. Let's check this in. Cross this off the list. Glad that one was so easy. Great. I like to clear out my Vim each time. That's cool. All right. Okay, next one. This is pretty important too. This dropped me. Uh, cool. Let's set another timer. How much time do we have up? That only took 13 minutes. I'm impressed. I was kind of intimidated by that last one. Okay. Story delay can stop the drop mini boss from spawning. What happens is. The story system works with timers and stuff, and it disallows a new story element to run if there's an existing timer. But this, the drop the mini boss, you want that, this is a story element that has to happen at a specific moment, right when you start the transition into the new area, it spawns the drop the mini boss. So what those kind of things need is a way to override all other story elements that are running and that actually should not be too hard to to work into the story system somehow and I like when I when I'm working on things like from this angle I like to do the data first it helps me to kind of for example where's this mini boss element at not that one not that yeah here if we're on this pattern, no save. So I would think this would be called like override. It's just an override flag. I've got I've got other override. I've got other flags like this. Like no save means that you don't save the story element after you run it, but it won't repeat the same story element during the same playthrough. It just means that each each subsequent time you start your game, it could trigger this event again. So anyways, if we add this override flag, that means that it needs to cancel any exit or or just pause delay whatever just it overrides other actions so thirteen minutes All right, how does, how does the story, let's start, let's code everything before running it if possible. Um, no save, let's look, look, whoops. 
look at how it does implements this. Savable, never, yeah. What is this? It, it loads the story node, right, okay. Probably, maybe story flags? What's story flags? Oh yeah, story flags. Save on complete. Okay, how does it use the get savable type? If I Oh, it just gets the savable type from its Ah, okay. This is fine. I can over I can actually add story flags without affecting the savable flag. Okay, so story flags. We can add a flag. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is really easy. Has bit story flags, same area. Great. So we need a story flag. story override and this is one case where I do want to start compiling as soon as you as soon as I modify something that's broadly included like source constants dot h it's just best to get that compiling while I'm doing the rest of the work all right now it's it's already got the parsing done it already parses it into story flags so all So it needs to it needs to check the story system tick goes and it looks through all of its story elements that it could run at a, any given moment and then calculates which ones first of all it it looks to see if it if it can run any new actions and that's that's the part we need to work on so the tick story tick no longer waiting for input, take the whole label, run the modal dialog first. Run the timer, this is the part. Okay, the trick here is is to do this without modifying, without really changing the effectiveness of the system because I guess if there's no timer and there's no modeless dialog, it checks every single tick what possible nodes it could run. So really there's not really much change. If I were to check this code, for example, right here, and go get possible nodes and put it up here before we run the timer, So we could peek into that list 
and figure out if it could run Actually, probably a better way to do it would be to look through the entire list of possible nodes for anything that has an override flag and could possibly be run at that given moment. And then if that's true, I got this. Okay, so let's do this. Auto bull or const can override equals has possible override. So if the timer is greater than zero and not can override then do your thing and this one too should be not can override Oh, did I just mess up the, the possible? Damn. Okay. Now we need to see this function has a possible override, which is going to be kind of like this get possible nodes one. as possible override. And I guess we would need to fix delta because we need to pass that to the get possible nodes one. Be right back. Take a little break. Pause my timer.
Hey, what's up, Cropper? How you doing, man? Whoops. Let's restart the timer. Resume. Okay, so we're gonna need to break part of this function into another function so we can have story status, hero area. Yeah, so getting the status here. Not bad, that's good to hear. Let's put this into its own function. Fill status. All right, so we're gonna need a map of or wait story status. Oh, is this? Oh, story status is already a variable. We don't need to. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. Fill status, area ref, area, int ref, hero. Fix delta. So get possible nodes. Yeah, that only it's only called in one place. Where does it use store? Is there anywhere else that uses story status? Looks like it's just being filled there and then checked there. Story status clear, set status, get status. Yeah, okay. This can go inside the now go inside the um the tick. So story tick. It looks like there's only one place where it returns here. So I guess you wouldn't really need to change update all the status there. So we could go fill status. Fix delta. And then we could also get the hero and stuff here. We, I guess we would need fix delta there too, and hero and area. Okay, but these things should be passed in. Like this. All right, we're getting into the second 15 minutes of this bug fix. Let's hope that, well, I guess there's no need to hope. Run action, get possible nodes, fix delta, pass in area and hero. There, that makes that all a bit more efficient. It only does that once if it needs to. All right, now we got has possible override. Is, is there really any need to pass in? Probably going to need fix delta, area, and hero as well. Because we're going to be calling, whoops. All right. 
now we've got two basically two different methods now for getting we got well two different methods that look over all the story nodes looking for something Yeah, there's no need to w look through the flag matches either, and there's no need to run through the entire story node, so... All we need to do is look for a, a new story element that can override... So, four nodes, story nodes... If... No, if the has bits no dot story flags case story override and can run then return true otherwise return false there now we got a has possible override let's see if we can compile now cleanly and just do a little quick check over everything. Right, so we're adding that story flag override to the drop mini boss. We've added the story override flag. We modularized that fill status function. Now we got a new function called has possible override, which looks through the list looking for anything that could, any story element that should override all other story nodes. And then get possible nodes. It's just been expanded to take an area and a hero, and it already uses its fill status method earlier in there. And now it doesn't return from there if it can override. Okay, this is gonna require some good testing because this could potentially break the entire story system and every other story element in the whole game. So this definitely has to be checked like, you know, multiple different ways. And I'll have to do, you know, a whole, a whole playthrough of the entire game just to make sure that I didn't break anything. But the upside is that we won't have this one little tiny issue where the drop mini boss doesn't appear. So. best way to start testing this overshadowing Okay, well, the best thing to do, I guess, is to set a breakpoint if we can override. It's kind of where all this starts. If can override. Okay, so we need to get this all set up so we have this potential situation um, about to happen, which means we need to look at where the dropped mini boss pattern is. 830. We need to not have the top hat so that we can, this element can trigger. And we also need one more story element to be there, so in fact I know one that can it runs like almost every time. We can just use Bell. Good, alright, we're there. We'll start to the south. Oh, that was a funny transition. Actually, when you're starting from the east, it'd be better. Yeah, that's a good place to start. Okay, no top hat. 
if we start with val, we'll immediately get a story element running. We want to see the story of verbosity. And try that. Okay, so we got what? No, we need Vel. What happened to Vel? Camp Jib. Great, so she's commenting. She's still got a timer. She got another timer. Boom! Oh, we didn't do the override. Why not? Let's start with Jib and run over there and we should get that element to happen. Oh, I didn't, I ran it from the command line. That's why I didn't trigger a breakpoint. Okay, but the system didn't work. Yep, we got the drop mini boss. All right, so we've established that this is indeed happening. And now we need that breakpoint to see if we even get that can override. Okay, let's do this. How much time we got left? Eight minutes. All right, we're running actions. Nothing. Okay, did it even parse the flag? Let's start there. Um, what story element is this again? Story, mini boss zero. If key equals mini boss zero. Okay, are we getting this flag parsed? All right, starting off, this node has zero story flags. Looking for each child, kid parse flags. Get the key, throw it into parse flags. Z, right? No. All right, we need to be looking at child has pattern is actions no save okay so after that we should have story flags of no save which is one and now this one we should have override keys override Oh, I didn't put in the story flags, did I? No wonder. Parse flag words, it's not gonna find anything. Duh, okay. Well, there's um, possibly the entire problem. Okay, we need a new word so we can parse it. Override. And this time, this time we should parse. Huh. 
All right, here we are looking at the mini boss zero key. All right, now let's just make sure that does indeed work. Very good. Okay, we can get rid of this. Start this over. What the heck is going on? Oh, it's game show. Game show is eating 200% of the CPU right now. No wonder my coding's been slow today. It's all your fault, game show. Ugh. I really need a separate computer for streaming. Okay, but anyways, we don't need that anymore. And we should be able to hit that next breakpoint. Let's see. We're starting to the right, starting with Vel. You let the story element run a second. Move over to that other screen. Should trigger. Should trigger this override. Can override thing. Now I just had a breakpoint there. Now we want it here. Okay. We got actions timer. Yes! It worked! We have a possible override. Alright, let's see what happens here. Stepping through the code. Because we've got a can override. The timer should be greater than zero, but it should skip over it. Really, I think what actually should happen though is it should kill any actions that are still running, maybe. Timer is greater than zero and oh right. 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 Oh, we don't need to look up the area again. Great. Get those possible nodes. What are they? Possible. Size one. Mini boss zero. Yeah. Good. It recognizes that it can run that action. And it should go ahead and run it. All right, now the really the real trick here, the question is, I may need to actually clear out any of the existing actions to override, but I'm gonna try it running without first. See what happens. We got running mini boss zero, but we still have a timer. Yeah, I think we need to clear out the timer at least. Ah, there he is, yeah. Okay, well let's try that. If um If we get all the way down here, oh, we got story actions not clear. Oh, it already clears them. Oh wait, but then it pushes back all the old actions on top of what it had before. I think it might just need to clear its timer then. As over, as override, as possible override. Too many things going on at once. Timer's going off. All right, cool. Well, we almost got this bug fixed. Let's set another 15 minute timer. Should be done by the next little segment. What's up, Jack? Yes, you, you've caught the stream live. Here you are. Here we are. How you doing? Welcome to the live stream. As possible, override. Then timer equals zero. If that works, That'll be really great.
Ouais, 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 ouais. Ah, 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 ah. Scan override. Not has possible override. That was the function. Can that, can you actually do that? You could say if function. I never knew you could even do that. I guess it's just comparing the pointer to the function. What other kinds of projects I worked on? I worked on some business software. That really didn't fulfill me. I worked for companies. I worked for a company that made music software once. But mostly I've worked in games. Wait, and mostly I've worked on my own. I've... Oh, yes! It overrode the action, but did it... Yeah, and she even kept her action, too, of saying, like, hey, let's go to the tower. That works great! All right! I think this is a good fix. That hopefully doesn't break everything else. All right, so to test this, okay, because I've got 15 minutes left here, and this is a super important thing, if I, this could break everything if I did something wrong. I think what I'm gonna do is start a new game in, in God mode, kinda, and just run through it as fast as I can. Before I do that, let's make sure there's no more warnings and the code is like basically in a state that it's ready to be checked in. So if this does indeed work, Okay, so I'm just renaming my first save game so that I can start a new one. And yeah, let's let's do the first story elements. I'll try and hit a thing that makes it like let's start, let's run in an, in a window because the game shows eating all of my CPU right now because it's got this little bug, which the developers are refusing to acknowledge. I've emailed them several times about this where it just eats the CPU. It's supposed to use like 50% CPU. Sometimes it uses 200. It makes all the compilation slow. And that's why you're hearing this like fan noise. Anyways, it irritates me. Let's take, uh, let's just go to a window size of like 1080p. So we're in windowed mode. I think that might help a little. Okay, we're gonna start a new save file. Stocky. Stocky sounds good, this is a six letter word. I never would have thought to put stocky in. Love that feature. Okay, good, we got the story notes playing the entire time, that's important. Should probably turn on the headphones just to make sure that we're hitting all the right Sound story events and all that. Puzzle incomplete. Rating for input. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so far we're the, this is working fine. This world's broken. You can get out. Wow. Ah. Oh. oh, I hate having when you're fixing one bug and you note another one. Oh well. Fix. Um, you 
No thickets to north in regular mode. No thickets around home area to north in regular mode. World stocky. All right, it's not too hard to fix. Let's throw it up kind of here in the... Right about there. It's perfect. Right there. Okay, back to this. Games are your favorite art form? Cool, man. Yeah, music, graphics, story, programming. Totally, right? It's so fun. I love mixing all those arts, right? Logic and emotion. Yeah, man, you can do it, dude. You can release your own game. Where are you at right now in the process? Okay, I just need to play through the first, like, ten minutes of the game and see if there's any story. We've got set eight minutes, so right, see what we can get done in eight minutes. So far, these story elements are running fine. Nothing has changed. Really, there's only one story element that even has the override flag, so... I guess it really isn't affecting anything else. I guess I'm worried for nothing. It's close. You work on any component system? Cool. Right on, man. I love vanity component systems. Oh my god, I'll never go back to not working with entity component systems. We got a biodetector already. Oh, it's because I used the I was running around there. Okay, where is where's the drop mini boss at? I really need to actually pause and see. Five three oh. That was that's the left and up a little bit. No, oh, I know, yeah. Never go back. Totally. I can't believe I wrote games without entity component systems before. It's like <laughs> I put myself through so much pain using oop. This is six, six, two, when you go up and to the left. All right, so we need to stand right here until Jib says something. Come on, do, do the one action. There it is, ouch, we got it, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, we confirmed it. There was there was a timer running. It had four seconds left, and this guy still spawned. Let's confirm it one more time, um, a different way. This time, let's. Uh, what was I thinking? Oh, right. If I just take away. If I just say can override equals false and do that same kind of thing again, then we should prove that prove that this is actually doing its job. What time we got? Four minutes left. Sweet. I'm really excited to have this bug fix. 
What were the other areas I needed to apply this? What's this warning? Oh, right, right. Statue falls. Yeah, lightning boss, kill a bomb. How many components would you be actively using at any one time? And what kind of performance would, be, would you be getting? I don't know about performance. Um, how many components actively using at any one time? Up to 20 or so. Um, Songbringer has... The, yeah, it says that many, well, yeah, if you take away the header files, it's, it's a probably about 20 different kinds of components, and a lot of entities have them all. All right, we're starting here. We have the sword. Good. All right, let's do this. We're going to run up to the same point. Wait for Jib to do something. There's another story element it could be running here. But Jib dying is just as fine. There. Well, yeah, ouch. Nice. Good. Yes. And it broke. See that? It did not spawn him. Okay. I guess we can confirm it one more time. So a few minutes. Just re put that in there. Nice. I love how it keeps the whatever actions were already running. It just basically gets rid of its timer. Okay, yes, check this in. So good. Except, oh, I do need to check two more entity types of story elements that need that. But this first bit can be checked in. Just review the code one last time. Override, override. We're filling up status. That's good. That's a separate function. Fill status. Actually, this really isn't any less efficient. It this one thing where it does this can override function. It does look through the list of nodes it could run, but it only checks the nodes that have the override flag, which is one out of like. 200 so do I ever get tired of press stress yes all three of course how do I deal with it well man I mean I'm just coming off one of the most tired depressed stressed times of making Songbringer ever the last like three weeks have been in hell terrifying super stressed very little sleep depressed I've been in tears I've literally been in tears just thinking about how over overwhelmed I am. So how do I deal with it? <sighs> Man, that's a tough question. I don't know. I guess you just find your moment of catharsis and you just, if possible, keep going, you know? But in general, it really helps to get enough sleep, for at least for me. So if I'm feeling tired, depressed, stressed, those kinds of things, like if I can just force myself to sleep somehow, or you know, even though I don't want to, even though I'm like, ah, oh, I got to get more bugs done or whatever, just sleep anyways. Sleep, sleep is super important for all that because like, sleep gets rid of your um, inflammation inside your body, which you know adds to your stress and your tiredness and your depression and everything. 
So I don't, I don't know. I guess sleeping is a really, really good way to solve that. Working out, you know, I work out a lot. That helps a lot. Um, I, uh, meditation is also key. Um, there have been times when I, I've been just like super depressed, like so, so negative emotionally. And then I'll meditate and I'll feel all the way better. It's incredible how much meditation can make a difference there. All right. Override, override, override. I like this. This is a really good check-in. It's pretty simple, actually. All right. Oops. Okay, we're checking this into the console branch. Correct. Yes. Okay, I'm not ready to cross that off my list just yet because I gotta go do two more elements. We're talking about the entrance to dungeon, what is this gonna be here? It's gonna be maybe negative, oops, negative 10 or 11 probably. Not 10 or 11. Maybe it's negative 11. Oh no! Don't be don't be sorry for asking questions. Not at all. I, I'm I'm personally sorry if I give off the vibe that I'm so busy that you can't ask questions. You know, I try and I try and work and chat, so it's probably my own fault, right? So, but yes, please ask your questions. I'm here to you know I'm here to. To chat and have a little have a little moment of not being alone making this game you know it's nice it's really really nice to do these live streams because it's cool to connect with y'all but also to to know that I'm really not that alone making this game that there are people out there that are interested in how it works or the, you know how programming in general goes or game making game development but also some people are interested in in the game songwriter too so that's cool um, negative 10 let's go try negative 11 maybe I'll just go to this. oh this is the wrong save oh okay back to negative 10 we don't need this stocky save anymore all right negative 10 And I need another 15 minute timer to make sure I don't overstep this. Okay, it's not negative 10. Negative 9? Okay, no jib, no bell. Definitely jib here. Uh, yes. No statue falls and, um, okay, good. Great, now the point here, we wanna have, oh, the way to, way to trigger this is to get 100 diamonds, or diamond, we have 200, let's get, oops, 90, 99 diamonds. And, We want to delete this one. Okay, we're ready to trigger a, a story element, and we want to go to story, and this statue falls. It needs the override flag. Both of these. Okay, this should be a pretty simple setup. It's important to be well rested. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not why I do the 15 minute thing. I've been doing that recently just to try and get myself to focus and also innovate on how to um, how to be a faster programmer, how to be a faster game developer. It's like, it's tough making a video game all yourself, but it's also a really healthy challenge. I love it. It's, it's very much you stress in the sense that 
I'm finding ways to make games that are that make it faster for one person to do. So the the 15 minute thing is just to like especially get myself to focus but do effective things. You know, like sometimes you can if I didn't set that timer, I could spend 15 minutes. I could easily waste 15 minutes doing just compiling, you know what I mean? Like just compiling something or coding something in an ineffective way, right? There's so many ways you can code things, right? And sometimes you can code something where it's super effective and super fast, and maybe you only compile once, you know, to fit, to, to, to do that one task that you set for yourself. So it's just for speed. It's not really for keeping myself rested or anything. In fact, probably setting a 15-minute timer is is it increases my stress you know because i'm trying to get more things done in a day so okay i think we're ready to run this all right we want to hit that bush over there get the get some diamonds triggers the hundred diamonds and then we step into the statue falls it are the statue falls already has a safeguards for this so this really isn't necessary i don't think but Adding this flag, I think, is good for future-proofing this whole. Oh, we need this stop. We need the top hat. All right. So we got this hundred diamonds. Yeah. Oh, boom. Okay. Good. It runs. It's fine. Let's see that with Vel as well. Like I said, this this is really probably not necessary here, but I think it's a good thing to add in case sometime I change the way that code works or something. Under diamonds. Let's see that in slow mo just to make sure I'm not missing anything. What's my usual drink snack food? Um, coconut waters. I don't really snack that much. I, I try and get like three solid meals a day. I eat a lot of rice and beans. I, I soak them. I soak all my rice and beans in water for about 24 hours or 12 hours before I cook them. Um, which is really important for making sure you're not getting any anti-nutrients. Um, and then, yeah, and I, I eat a lot of vegetables, beans, and rice. And I, I actually used to eat a lot of meat. I used to eat tons of meat. I was a total carnivore. And recently, I've switched to eating a lot less meat. In fact, I pretty much eat meat like once or twice a week now. Um, and I find that helps me to have um, stronger bones. I don't know. It sounds weird, but I was eating so much meat that it, it caused ketosis, which means that my bones were deteriorating because I was eating so much meat. Because what that does, when you eat a lot of meat, it your body has to use a lot of minerals to process it. So, so yeah, my body's, I don't know. I find that I need a lot of minerals. I don't know, maybe it's just my body type or whatever. Maybe it's because I'm programming all the time and using my brain all the time. But minerals are freaking really, really important. And that's why I soak all my, um, my rice and beans just to make, because what you can get is this thing called phytic acid in your in your rice and your beans and things like that. And pretty much all all the rice you ever eat from restaurants and things like that is all has phytic acid in it. And what that does is your body has to use its minerals to cap encapsulate that phytic that the the that's basically you're using more minerals. So, anyways, I hope that was I hope that answered your question. I hope it helps too to hear this kind of stuff. With Vel and slow mo. Oops, wait. Oh, wait, we saw the timer. Ah, oh, never mind. All right, yes, we confirm. There's definitely a timer running. There's one dialogue line left to run. Statue Falls. Oh, Statue Falls clears all the actions. Okay, I guess I could prove this concept if I take away Statue Falls. 
is clearing there. So is that any more story system stuff? No, that's it. Okay. So back to that. Yeah, if I clear all this, it should still work. But I'll probably leave this in anyways. Right, good up, right on, man. It helps. It really helps to eat well and to like work out and, and exercise and things like that because it, it gives you more energy for doing what you love. You know, I love making video games. If I could make video games for more hours per day, I would. And I think that help. You know, doing yoga every day and things like that helps me to do more because it just gives me more energy overall. You know. Okay, so this time the story system is not even clearing those actions. So let's see it in slow mo. Still got a timer. Timer 0.32. Boom. But it's. Oh no, it didn't work. Oh, it did work. It just took a second because it was still processing that dialogue. Okay. I, I understand how that works now. That's good. I like it. Let's clear those actions. Approve that. We got only this one tiny change, and let's check the other action that we're. Oh wait, there's that one more action. We got to add this to and check it. That last action is where we have the. What action is that? Uh, uh, what is it? Why'd I choose Cocos? You know, I want, because I'm more familiar with Cocos than I am with STL or SFML. Um, I was, I really think it's a big thing when you're when you're starting a game that you're familiar with your engine already, um, because it just saves you a lot of time. I already knew how to do a lot of things in Cocos 2DX, so, and I already knew that Cocos 2DX had all of the features that I needed. Coco Studio X is kind of bloated. If I were to make that choice again right now, I might actually choose SDL because SDL is so fast to compile. It's so lightweight. I'm pretty sure SDL has all the features I would need. So, yeah, it was just a familiarity thing. It just it was just a time saver at the beginning of the project. So here's another one we probably don't need, but let's do this same thing to your death. And what triggers? Oh, I mean flux jib. Right. This is if you are that pattern. Okay. How in the heck am I going to get a story element to trigger right there, though? But if I were to try switching to SDL, how long do I think it would take? Probably a few months. Um, I am considering this maybe for the next game. I would like to actually write an, an engine abstraction layer. So I would just take everything that I've written for Songbringer 
and abstract it so that all the sprites and this it's a simple game i mean there's only 2d sprites and shaders is basically all it needs um and it also heavily relies on coco's 2dx actions so i kind of have to write my own action system um but other than that i would just use i would be able to swap in any kind of renderer you know for, for using sprites and things like that so i think that would take at least a few months though if not six months That's a, that's a thing, man. If you, I honestly believe this. If you want to make games, you shouldn't be writing an engine. If you love, if, but if you want to write engines, if you really would just love to write an engine, go write an engine. But don't don't fool yourself into thinking that you're gonna write an engine and a game. They're both a, a shitload of work. You know, you can't really do both if you're alone. Maybe if you're in a team, you can have one person writing an engine and one person writing the game. But I really don't think it's it's realistic to do both. Okay, I need an action. Oh, I got one. When he gets his first life. Shoot, what's that called? Heal one, all right. Heal one. I'm pretty sure we can run that. Let's go to P, um, we're going to the ship right before the boss. Okay, so the, the goal here is to pick up a, pe a tooth before... Oh, do we have the override flag? Yes, all right, good. No, wait, no, it's, yeah, yeah. Statue falls, give death. Okay. I think we're set up for this. How much time we have left? 30 seconds, it's not gonna happen. Well, we'll set another timer anyway. Yeah, so I'll need to kill one of those boxes, grab the tooth, trigger a story element, and hope that, that lasts long enough. When I started, did you have a concrete plan? <laughs> no, not at all. You just kind of develop it as you went along. Yeah, totally. Which is better? I think it's kind of a stylistic thing, personal thing, really. You know, if you're the kind of person that really needs a lot of structure, then you're probably going to want to plan it out and write a design document and things like that. But for me, I hate design documents. I hate plans. I hate lists. I hate having a freaking Trello list. I wish I didn't have to. But, but with a project with freaking hundreds of items I got to get done and I don't, I can't remember all those things, all these areas, all these particular locations in this world of 308 million different possibilities. But anyways, you know what I mean? I think it's just kind of who you are. I don't really think there's a better. Which one? There's not really one that's better, in my opinion. We got it? No, we didn't do the action. Oh, maybe because of the, okay. I think that action, we're gonna have to hack this action at first. Yeah, Z zero. Oh yeah, yeah. Z zero through 10, actually. Let's see that. Got live complete, drop. Oh, it has to be complete as well. We gotta turn off complete. Right, good, we got a timer but it's not gonna last long enough. Let's make this last much longer. Try that again. We've got the override flag, so it should be 
Oh, let's do, okay, let's do one more thing. Let's make it painfully obvious when the story system runs, uh, runs one of these can override actions, right? If can override, timer equals zero, and if verbosity is greater than zero, then nms debug alert, Story override. Do I have any Easter eggs? Yep. Well, are they actually Easter eggs? There's a lot of hidden stuff in Songbringer. Yes, I guess there is an Easter egg. It comes from it comes from a very cool person that backed the project. I won't tell you what it is, but there is definitely an, there's a couple Easter eggs in the game that come from backers from the Kickstarter all the way back in 2015 thank you backers thank you for supporting me thank you for supporting Songbringer without you this would not have been possible also without my amazing publisher this would not be possible who I found recently they found me actually double eleven Did that, did that actually just work? Did it say story override? Uh, I messed it up because I changed the time. I think this is working though. I really don't think I'm doing much here testing this one. I probably should just call this good. Yeah, I don't see how that overrode at all. But I think we're good leaving that in. That's that's just checks verbosity. Um, let's undo the actions here to that. and undo the actions to this. Right, so we added the override flag to a couple different other entities that didn't even really need it, but it's good future-proof stuff in case I ever change the way the fluxes work. And I added this one thing, it's, if the verbosity is on, it shows that it overrides. Good. I like it. Checking it in. And this bug is done. Which means I'm done with my stream today. Got three bugs fixed. Today's stream is pretty good. That last one took a minute. Oh, that last one took about 45 minutes. But the other two, well, the first one took about 30 minutes. And the second one took 15. It was pretty good. So I got a lot of bugs left to fix. I got a lot of, uh, there's still more creative elements to get done. These are more minor creative elements. These are just kind of like tweaks and things like that to the game. What? Oh, five seconds! Exclamation points! <laughs> well, you did know there's a YouTube archive, right? If you ever, if you didn't know, or if there's anybody watching that wants this, this is my YouTube address, and it's just, every time I do one of these live streams, I upload it to YouTube, so it's all archived here. You can watch it in chronological order or in reverse chronological order. The playlist is called uh, Making Songbringer. Yeah, so there's Making Songbringer and Making Songbringer Chronological. Oh, nice, right on, cool. Well, yep, that's it for today's stream. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for chatting.
appreciate you all. I'll be back later. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time.